guys just popping in for a minute just to remind you about the great competition we have on our website at the moment if you want to get yourself in the running to win this 100 hundred dollar fuel card um, all you have to do is head over to the web shop buy some of our merch and you get an entry into the draw for that fuel card now basically if you buy a sticker or a patch you get one entry if you buy a t-shirt or a drink bottle you get two entries and if you buy a bundle uh, that involves a drink bottle or a t-shirt then you get five entries so we have but still got some of the jeep merch available some of the new t-shirts gray black some of the old jeep merch there the 20 ounce tumblers heaps of patches and heaps of stickers some of the old stickers and lots of the new stickers for you so jump on the website grab yourself some of the merch get yourself in the running for this fuel card and your purchases will go a long way to help me make more of this content for you guys all right guys hope you enjoy this week's video and we'll catch you next week cheers G'day guys, my name is Paul and welcome to another episode and uh, yep it's past one o'clock on a Saturday so it's perfectly legal to be drinking while filming so cheers and why does the car come along just as I'm about to film oh my god alright so as it turns out another youtuber just decided to come driving down this same little track that I'm on to do some kind of campsite review on the campsite there's nowhere near here and uh, now he's going to come back up the track right. God's sake alright so now he's gone I think he's gone <laughs> ways away you're out in what feels like the middle of nowhere you start the camera up and somebody rocks up and spoils your set anyway never mind we'll go cheers again because now I'm halfway through my bottle so the purpose of this video is I always get asked in the um, four wheeling for beginners group what is basic recovery gear now I know I've done a video before on basic recovery gear but it's a fair way back in the archives and when people ask I've got to go searching for it but I thought I'd put together another one with just the basics that one had a lot of other things in there that were nice to have this is in the context of I've just gone out and bought myself a four-wheel drive I've joined a couple of Facebook groups for four-wheel driving never been four-wheel driving before and there's an event in a month's time on one of these groups and in the event it says bring your basic recovery gear and people always say what is that so I thought I'd put this video together now I know some people are going to say oh you should have one of these and you need one of those that's all the nice to haves this is the stuff that I think you should have in your basic kit and we'll start off with a tire deflator now this is the easy deflator from ARB there are many different types of tire deflating devices on the market this is the one I use I don't get given different ones by different companies to try out I was given this one by ARB many years ago when I did a massive upgrade on my Jeep and they threw this in for free and I've been using it ever since I'll uh, insert some footage from Gary showing you how to use one of these tire deflators clearly we take the cap off up there right pull that out so we don't lose the cap uh, screw this on all the way right so that's on now slide this in and turn until you feel it grab we undo the valve stem right and then we pull that back which you can see here you're actually sitting on 35 psi right, we pull that back out that lets the air out So while we're going there, that's still sitting up high. When you push that back down, that will give you an accurate PSI oh, yeah, measure, yeah. which you're down to about 28. So we come it out again. Okay, we're down to as low as we need to be. 
slide that back in and then start the turn which screws your valve back in put it back in until it's tight slide that back out and then take it off your valve grab your valve cap put that back on and then rinse and repeat for all four but as you can see they are pretty easy so you must let your tyres down when going off road or you're going to get stuck or you're going to destroy your tyres so there's no set rule as to what PSI you go down to different cars different tyres different terrains will tell you what you need to go down but if you're going on a beach about 15 16 PSI is good if you're going in rocky muddy terrain somewhere around 18 22 is good and if you're on a dirt corrugated road somewhere between 25 and 28 is generally good so tire deflator you definitely need one of those that is a must-have in your kit which was a surprise to me when i first started going off road because i didn't know anything about them so tire deflator now when you deflate your tires at the end of the day course you're going to need to reinflate them and that's where you need one of these now this is a king's thumper this particular type of compressor comes in all different colors different brand names on it but it is basically the same compressor probably made in the same factory in China but it's just got different brand names on it I've got one that I run in the back of the Hilux. It's permanently fixed in there and... plugged into an Anderson plug that is directly linked to my start battery. And I pretty much can just air up without having to lift the bonnet and connect it. So, this one here is the double thumper. Um, I don't use it anymore. I've only used it twice but um, yeah much of a muchness all of these types of compressors but you do need to have one because you're not always going to be near a service station where you can pump your tires up and a lot of service station owners don't actually like people especially up in Lansdowne and that coming in queuing up to use their air compressor because that's their electricity and wear and tear on their equipment so carry one of these they are not that expensive. Yes, you can spend up to a thousand bucks on a double air compressor from ARB or TJM or any of those big places. These ones here, basically, I've only ever owned this type and now I've got my second one in the back of the car now in what, eight years or so of doing a lot of off-roading. So now, of course, when you pump your tires up, you're going to need tire gauge to be able to tell what pressure you're pumping up to now the compressors have one on them but they're not that accurate grab yourself one of these they're less than 10 bucks you can have an analog one like that or you can have a digital one quickly check your tire pressures and then you know exactly where you are so let's put that back over there for now that is tires very important part of off-roading letting your tires down um, there's no point in waiting until you get stuck to drop your tires down you might as well do it before you get stuck then you don't get stuck okay next cab off the rank is recovery bores now this is a max Trax. they come in a pair you can have two pairs like I've got on my roof up there or you can have one pair if you don't do a lot of four-wheel driving my advice would just be get yourself one set if you do a lot of four-wheel driving i would definitely recommend you get two now these are quite simple to use and again i'll insert some footage of gary using them we dig the sand away we take said max track jam it in underneath the tyre. And as you can see, if Gary can do that, anybody can do it. Now, as you might have seen in that footage, 
There is one end here that is generally marked as shovel. And on this particular one, it's not. But generally, you can use these as a shovel to get yourself out of trouble. However, I do recommend that in your basic kit you have a long handled shovel. Alright, two reasons. One, it's a lot easier to use than bending down and getting that. You can literally dig from up here. You don't have to be bending down doing that. Two, if you are bellied out, your floorboards are on the ground and your wheels are not actually touching any sand anymore, that is not going to help you. You are going to need to dig all the sand out from underneath your car. And I can tell you that one of these ain't going to cut it. All right, you're not going to be able to reach in and shift a lot of sand with one of those. There's only one thing those things are good for, and I'm not going to go into it. Not here anyway. So, a long handled shovel. Again, that was 10 bucks from Bunnings. I've got a fancy one up on the roof there that's custom made, handmade by a gentleman in Sydney. But that's my choice. 10 bucks for a long handled shovel to go into your kit. It's not a big ask. Next, we go to the other recovery gear. Now, of course you need another vehicle to use these. And that is a snatch strap or what a lot of people are going towards these days, a kinetic rope. All right, that is a nine ton kinetic rope. I think that's about an eight and a half ton snatch strap. Now, the benefits of a snatch strap is size. That rolls up, fits in your kit bag quite easily, whereas that doesn't. However, I have more swung towards these. Now West Coast 4x4 Recovery have brought out their own brand of recovery gear and we have basically been doing a lot of r and over the last 12 months to make sure that they're up to the challenge and I can tell you now they are. So these will be available on the market very soon if not already. So kinetic rope or snatch strap, you definitely need one of those. The other things you need of course to connect them are soft shackles. All right, now I've gone away from the metal shackles. Um, I was very scared to do that because I didn't trust a piece of rope to be joining that to my car. However, having used these for the last 12 months in the recovery industry, I think they're great. <laughs> I will never use a metal shackle again. They are light, they are easy to use, straight through the end of that, straight into your recovery points. They are great. You need at least two of those. And of course, the final thing that you do need is one rated recovery point because you can't rely on a tow ball. You can't rely on a tie down hitch on your vehicle. So if you're going to do a full on snatch recovery, I advise you to get yourself one of these. These are less than $50 and they go straight into your tow hitch. Now, I've only put that shackle on for show. If you do get yourself one of these, do not drive around with that shackle in the end of it, because what happens is these pins become loose as you're driving along the highway, and they come out. All of a sudden, that hits the ground and becomes a missile. Go through your windscreen, go through the windscreen of the car traveling behind you. So, I don't even use those anymore. Your soft shackle, goes straight through that hole. Hooks up. Hooks up there. So that's in the back of your car. That hooks up to your snatch truck. Get yourself one of those, all right? Yes, I've got twin recovery points on the front of mine that are rated to eight and a half ton. Yes, you do have tie down and tow hitches in there. And there are places that you can hook onto in the case of an emergency to pull someone out, but I would not recommend snatching off any of those points. A rated recovery point is the only place you should be doing a full snatch from. And that is pretty much it. That is what I would consider to be a basic recovery kit. Now, flies are everywhere today. There is one last piece of equipment, and no, it's not my Matzo's ginger beer. That's getting a bit warm in the sun. 
This is a handy to have, but not a necessity. A UHF radio. If you don't have one mounted in your car, you can get handhelds, you can buy them in a twin pack, all right? That way you can take them wherever you go, you get out of the car, you've got it on you. But if you're in a convoy, you're out on a, an event, you're in a convoy with a group of people, it is important to be able to communicate with those people. Especially when doing a recovery, it is extremely important to be able to communicate with the person that is recovering you so that they know you are ready to go. So, for the sake of a couple of hundred bucks, one of those is a really nice to have and uh, come in very handy, UHF radio. So that is my take on a basic recovery kit. Again, probably some people out there that would say, oh, you could use a bridle, an extension trap, a strap, a tree trunk protector, another one of these. You can add all sorts of bits. I've got plenty of recovery gear in the back of that thing. I've got a winch. So of course I've got all the things that you need to have a winch. But when you buy a recovery kit, you generally end up with things that you don't use or are never going to use. So sometimes, go out and get yourself a simple tie deflator, a gauge, snatch strap, a couple of shackles, and a cheap compressor. $10 shovel from Bunnings. The most expensive thing is going to be those. Now Max Tracks are the most expensive, or almost the expensive, if not the most expensive ones on the market, but in my opinion, they are the best. Uh, they stack down lower than any other tread. They're tough, they're durable, and they don't fade when they're sitting up on your roof. Worth a bit of time and money to invest in a set of those. But again, you can pick them up cheap for around 100 bucks on the internet. There's X balls, there's various other types that you can buy that are cheaper. If you're only going out, as I said, once or twice a year, cheap set's fine. But if you're gonna get into four wheel driving and do a lot of it, I would invest in a set of those because I reckon they're worth it. So that is pretty much it guys. Um, basic recovery kit. That is what you need if you're uh, going out in that event in that four wheel drive group. All right guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed and got something out of this video. Um, to our Patreon supporters, thank you so much for your support. If you want to help support us, please jump on our website and grab yourself one of those great t-shirts patch, sticker, any of the other merch that's in there, it goes a long way to help me produce content for you. Alright guys, don't forget to like, subscribe and share. I'll see you on the next adventure. Cheers!